Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is um, October 26, 2023. It's been quite a while since I've done a uh, Bible teaching video. <clears throat> and I think that uh, it's a good time to bring some uh, understanding, some more understanding about the times we live in, and also to uh, bring you some encouragement. I'm sure that many of you are going through the types of things that uh, I am and that my wife is going through uh, just in terms of bodily illnesses that we shouldn't have to deal with, but we do because of uh, what they're doing to us. And uh, <clears throat> we need to understand that they're doing it to us and that they've done it to us and that they've been doing it to us for a long time. I'm surprised that more Christians are not getting it. Um, one person that is getting it is Karen Kingston. She is um, a researcher and she has revealed um, a lot of what the planned pandemic was all about. Let me read you something that just came in my email this morning. It's a quote from Karen. She, um, she's quoting Mark 13 verses 19 and 20. And first she says this, all of God's divine creations are under attack. And then Mark 13, 19 through 20, she quotes, For those days will be a time of tribulation, such as not occurred since the beginning of creation, which God created until now and never will. <clears throat> and then Karen offers this comment. Some other power is creating life. You see, some other power is changing, attempting to change at least, our DNA. And evidently, actually changing it. And then the rest of the verse says, Unless the Lord had shortened those days, no life would have been saved. And Karen adds, no biological life. In other words, they're changing biology. They're merging man with machine. Everything is all about artificial intelligence now. The singularity, the total merging of man with machine. Uh, Ray Kurzweil wrote a book that was published in 2005 called The Singularity is Near. And in that book, he said that by the year 2030, the singularity would be complete. Well, we are only about six years from that. Now, it's important at this time to continue in the scripture, to continue reading the word, continue to fill yourself with God's word because the word of God is our food. And for me, it's been very frustrating lately because I'm not seeing God step in yet and deal with this situation. And the situation is dire. It's, it's, uh, utterly dire. Well, let me go to a couple verses to get started with today. Proverbs 25, 2 says this, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. Then Ecclesiastes Chapter 3 says this, verse uh, 10. 
Ecclesiastes 3.10 says, God has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Now isn't that interesting? God has put eternity into our hearts, but yet we cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. You know, I never understood that until just this past week, what that's talking about. Because I've really been trying to understand what the true history of mankind is. You know, they've lied to us about everything. They have lied to us about everything, and we do. We don't even know what kind of an earth we live upon. They have sold us the hoax, the heliocentric hoax, so that we don't even understand that we live on a fixed, stationary, flat earth. And that's just the beginning. There is a dome over us. There is a fixed firmament over us. The stars move in fixed order that has never changed. God tells the story of creation in the stars, but it's been hidden, hidden from us. Well, let's go to um, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 because he adds a little more insight into this. In Ecclesiastes 8, verses 16 and 17, Solomon says, When I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done on earth, how neither day nor night do one's eyes see sleep, then I saw all the work of God, that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. However much man may toil in seeking, he will not find it out. Even though a wise man claims to know, he cannot find it out. You know, our history, the history of the world, simply doesn't make sense. The buildings that exist in this country, many of which have been demolished over the last 150 years, or 180 years, Magnificent buildings. Magnificent buildings existed, for example, in San Francisco before men went out in the 1800s to search for gold. And there's so many examples. You can go online and find picture, picture after picture of buildings that are so magnificent that you can hardly believe that men made them. So I've been looking, trying to understand our history and my history as a human being, and then suddenly I see these verses in Ecclesiastes that, uh, through the appointment of God, were brought to my attention by my wife. So often, she and, she and I feed each other a, an appropriate word, and God has worked like that in our lives for 45 years. Um, and it's been a wonderful thing. So what? What is this that we're going through right now? Colossians 1, verse 13 says this, that God has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son. God has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son. This kingdom that we live in, 
the kingdom we see this is the domain of darkness the bible gives it another name it is babylon the great we were transferred delivered from the domain of darkness and transferred to the kingdom of christ that happened when we believed by faith when we believed Babylon the Great, though, does not want to let go of us. Babylon the Great has done a great job of convincing us that it is a glorious kingdom. Why do people go on vacations every year? Why do they travel the earth? going to see a new site, a new place. Because they see this world as a glorious kingdom. And so Babylon the Great, through its sorcery, through its religious institutions, as well as its fraternal institutions like uh, Freemasons, Babylon the Great has convinced us Christians that we live in a great kingdom. Now, she never calls herself Babylon the Great. But why do you spend thousands of dollars to go on vacations? Why did you take the jab so you could go on one of these vacations? if indeed you took it. So we, we have been lied to by all of the powers that we respected, and that includes our religious powers, the spiritual powers. John, in 1 John chapter 2, verse, verses 15 through 17, says this. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life, is not from the Father but is from the world. And the world is passing away, along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Babylon the Great is the world system. And that system we have been lied to by our entire lives. In Revelation 17, starting in verse 1, John begins to have a vision of Babylon the Great. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls, that's the bowls of wrath, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great whore, the great prostitute who is seated on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality, and with the wine of whose sexual immorality the dwellers on earth have become drunk. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names, and it had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of harlots, mother of prostitutes, and of earth's 
abominations. Mother of Earth's abominations. Who? Babylon the Great. She's a mother of more prostitutes like her, and she's the mother of the Earth's abominations. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, who always killed the saints. Well, it started with Rome, and then it after Rome, then it continued with the Holy Roman Empire, the Church, the Catholic Church. If anyone try, tried to break free from the Catholic Church, they were tortured and killed. The woman, a primary component of which is the Catholic Church, the woman was seen by John drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, John says, I marveled greatly. Why do you think John marveled so greatly? But the angel said to me, why do you marvel? I'll tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast with seven heads and ten horns that carries her. Why do you marvel? I'll tell you why I think John marveled. Because he saw the church at the end of the age and she was a harlot just like Judah had been when they crucified Christ and just like Israel, the nation of Israel had been when they were destroyed by Assyria around 720 B.C. Now, at the very end of chapter 17, the angel says this. The angel said to me, The waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. And the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. They and the beast will hate the prostitute. The beast that he's talking about, he he identifies in the verses before this in chapter 17. It's the eighth head of the beast that he's talking about. And it says that ten kings follow that head. Those are the ten horns. The ten kings and the beast, who is like the high king, he is the high king of the earth, who... I have identified in many previous videos, and now uh, his wound looks incurable. These ten horns and the beast will hate the prostitute. Who's the prostitute? Babylon the Great. Includes the Catholic Church all the fraternal organizations, all the clubs out there, includes all of the Protestant churches that have gone astray. That's her daughters. See, the harlots, the harlot daughters of Babylon the Great are all of these startup Protestant churches that have occurred in the last 500 years, 600 years. The ten horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. What's he doing here? What's, what's he suddenly done here. What's that great city? Jerusalem, of course. What's everybody all in an uproar about right now? Jerusalem. Natural Jerusalem. 
Babylon the Great is a natural kingdom. It's the kingdom of this world. They have tricked Christians into blindly supporting the nation that goes by the name of Israel now and their agenda with respect to Jerusalem with the concept of Zionism. The great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth is Jerusalem. So everyone now is working behind the scenes to make this thing happen, that they want to happen at Jerusalem. But it includes far more than Jerusalem because what the real goal is, is to destroy Babylon the Great. And when Babylon the Great, which is the ruling system of the world, is destroyed, everything, the entire world system crumbles down. That's why we're seeing what we're seeing in the natural. We're seeing supply chain problems. We're seeing food problems. We're seeing incredible health problems. We're seeing many, many more deaths than we should be seeing because of what they are doing to us. They're controlling our weather daily. Chemtrails are real. Morgellons is real. A disease that's caused by the nanoparticles that invade bodies. So when you, when you realize that this world system that we love, that we love to go vacation at, that we love to go sightsee, you know, why sightsee? Why go to a museum? It's filled with lies. I mean, there's, there are interesting museums like those that are filled with boats, but there's so many museums that are just filled with lies. And so here we are at this particular time, which is the end of the age, which is the Great Tribulation that Karen Kingston brought our attention to in the book of Mark chapter 13. So as we continue in Revelation chapter 18, it says this, after this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was made bright with his glory, and he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. For all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality, and the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues, for her sins are heaped high as heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. If you see where we are in time with respect to being at the end of the age, then obey the precepts of the scripture that God has given us. Come out of Babylon. Come out of the ways of Babylon. And they're so numerous. You know, all of the, all of the programs, all of the schools, all of the works that are done in this world are all through this defiled thing that God calls Babylon the Great. And then chapter 18 continues with this. It talks about everything that is lost from Babylon the Great. 
And then the final verse, <clears throat> verses 23 and 24 of chapter 18 says this, All nations were deceived by your sorcery. And in her, in Babylon the Great, was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all who have been slain on the earth. Now, interestingly, interestingly, you will find that same phrase in Jeremiah. It's either chapter 50 or 51. And also in those two chapters of Jeremiah, they talk about the destruction of Babylon the Great. And it's not talking about the destruction of Babylon that occurred 70 years after the captivity of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar. It's talking about the destruction of Babylon today. And it's either two or three times in those chapters, 50 and 51, that Jeremiah says, come out of her. So, seeing where we are, knowing that the world has lied to us, has deceived us, about history, understanding that we don't even know our history, stop playing with the world. Listen to, listen to what John says. Do not love the world. This is chapter 2 of 1 John. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. There are tons of of antichrists out there right now. You are hard-pressed to find someone speaking the true word of God today. They went out from us, but they were not of us. If they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? You know, if anyone denies that Jesus, Jesus is the Christ, he is a liar. He is the Antichrist. This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made to us, eternal life. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. People are still trying to deceive you, even people in the church. Wolves in sheep's clothing. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you, but the anointing that you received from him, in other words, the Holy Spirit that you received when you believed in Jesus, abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. See, if we have the Holy Spirit in us, we have no need that anyone else teach us. The Holy Spirit will teach us as we seek Him, as we seek God, as we seek the Word of Christ, the Word of God. And then these very important verses at the end of chapter 2 and beginning of chapter 3 of 1 John. <clears throat> and now, little children... Abide in him, so that when he appears we may have confidence, and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. 
If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. Are you practicing righteousness? Do you put into practice the righteous precepts of God? Do you know what the righteous precepts of God are? Can you name the Ten Commandments? Practice righteousness. Chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us? That we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him, did not know Jesus. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies Himself as He is pure." Our goal, the goal of our creation, is to become like Jesus. Like Jesus. And those who hope to become like Jesus purify themselves. Verse 4, everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that Christ appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, just as Jesus is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. And the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. Well, how many Christians do you know who take regular trips to uh, Las Vegas? Oh, why would you go to Las Vegas? Opportunity to sin, maybe? Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Why is this happening? Why did God put it in the heart of the beast to destroy Babylon the Great? Because God is bringing down Satan's kingdom. The Son of God appeared to destroy the works of the devil. Come out of the devil's works. Come out of Babylon the Great. Don't go visit their cities. Don't go into their lawless places. Look how lawless all of their cities have become. Why would you want to go there? The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. The one who does not love his brother is not of God. We have to be able to identify the people of God. Obey God's word. Come out of this system that already is in the process of being destroyed. You do not want to be found in her rubble.